change anyway after you went back too far. Um, I'm going to it again. Just snap backwards. And so I did the IMDB does not work since they sold it to, or since they sold it to Amazon. Yeah, no, it doesn't work as well. I don't know what they're doing differently. I don't know, I'm trying to get that back up, but, you know, uh, okay, here we go. Now we can actually do it. This is all okay. cam. And this is not a spring chicken today. We're going to be talking about the Emmy screening series. And these are for different shows that are, that want to be nominated for an Emmy. Yeah. You know, that's what happens is they, um, they have these things, they run the shows for people that can vote, for, you know, and they want to get a nomination in next, probably next month. They'll put together the, uh, you know, they'll have people put together things, then they'll have the nominations out mm -hmm. for people to vote on. Then there'll be another series of screenings like this for mm -hmm. the Emmy members. But, uh, you, know, we, uh, you know, But the one we're talking about today is called Men of a Certain Age. Mm -hmm. And this happens to be on the TNT network. Yeah. And it has... It's got Ray Romano, Scott Beluca, and Andre Bauer, and its creators were Ray Romano and... Mike Royce, who were at the screening. Scott Beluka was supposed to be there, unfortunately. You mean Bacula? Bacula. Bacula. <laughs> Bacula. 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 is actually, it just depends on how you want to really pronounce it. And from the same area he is, so I know how to pronounce it. Actually, his name is Stuart. Oh, is that what it is? The, the family name is Beluka, but his name is... <laughs> it's spelled B-A-K-U-L-A? Yeah, but it is Scott Stewart. Mm. Yeah. It's a little bit different. Yeah. I think it would be easier the other way. There might have been another Scott Stewart, yeah. which is what happens sometimes with IMDb. Yeah. But, but basically, this, oh, no, but if you basically the K is lost, so if you drop the K, it's Scott Balu, Scott, Scott Ba Lu A. Oh, I see what you did, Lu A. Yeah. You didn't add another K. I was thinking you were inverting the two letters. No, we drop the K and make a sound in this language. But uh, <clears throat> like this uh, <clears throat> deals with the gay. A group of college buddies in the throes of middle age keep their relationship going along after they graduate. The problem is, there's only one middle aged person in the cast. Well, I guess it depends on what you're defining as middle age. Mm, if you're not 50, you're not middle aged. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I don't know how old are they. Baluk is 57. How old? Bauer is 48, and Romano is 47. So, well, you know, it's kind of like the midlife crisis time. <clears throat> well, no, but they said what happened is is that Romano and Royce are basically basing it upon things that they've seen in other people. Oh. Uh, yeah. Let's see, I, I, I see, it's also other people that are somewhat related to Mr. Romano down there basically telling them, don't, keep, don't listen to anything he's saying because, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Basically going, mm -hmm. Well, actually, you know. this is one of those series that I was actually looking forward to seeing for a while because I know a young actress who plays Ray Romano's daughter, Brittany. Oh, Grant. that one. Oh, yeah. I saw that one, yeah. And Brittany has always been such a doll. And, you know, I asked her, I said, how is it working with Ray? And she said, you know, he's just a regular guy. Well, he's a typical Jew. He's an Italian, but he's a typical Jewish comedian, folks. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I, I you know... I like, you know, the, I, mean, I, I watched it and I sat there and it is it's so full of cliches. Well, it's comedy, isn't it? I know. Because but, that's what they go through. No, but um, like they were talking about that he, he, after he was off the air for a couple of months, he decided he didn't want to be, uh, well, let me put it this way, can we say Italian Jew? Um, he, the show, of course, he was almost Everybody Loves Raymond. Which I didn't like either. So, I mean, it's nothing... Okay, I grew up... Uh, I, actually, I did work on a television series called The Goldbergs, which is a Jewish... Sounds family. very Jewish. Yeah. My family is... A lot of Jews in my family, so I grew up with... I know whining Jewish, Jews when I hear them. You know, oh, gee, yes. You know, I do I have to do that. You know... Maybe exaggerated a bit. No. That's Ray Romano. He's playing a Jewish... He, he basically, everything he does is a Jewish comedian bit. It's all Jewish comedian stick. I, I hated it when I grew up because I was around it. I worked on a television series where they did that. I knew Jewish comedians. And I always knew that they were simply... There is a, 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 like a, 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 a Jewish theater 
And these people simply will stick to that stick no matter what they do. You just, you know, they, they, I mean, there, there hasn't been a new thing done in the Jewish theater since the death of Christ. Okay, so you know the genre. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, and am I critical? Stick. Well, yeah, I mean, you had a, got an awful lot of talented people doing things that I've seen done a thousand times before. Yeah, but isn't that the old Hollywood formula? If it works, you might as well repeat it over and over and over? Yeah, but it doesn't work anymore. You know, I mean, it, it, you know, um, okay, we put it this way. What, what he had, it, he could he paddle it to the networks, they didn't want it. He paddled it to HBO, HBO bought it, and then they dropped it when a new head came in. Oh, did they? And then they moved it over to um, TNT. TNT. And, and uh, actually, I actually did my research on this one because this was, I, I knew about Spartacus because, you know, I knew about the poor guy that got cancer and basically had to make changes. That, that's a big challenge. And then I, I had, I actually didn't, I didn't, I, when I, when I knew it was, I heard about when we did Cinema Verite at the rap. I mean, I just figured, when I said the first family reality TV, I just assumed that it was about, you know, the first family of reality TV, you know, like the, the people that were in charge of reality TV now, like the, you know, like the gentleman that does the Survivor and things. No, mm -hmm. it was about the Laos family, which helped create reality TV. So this one I got more careful. I went and did my research. This, this show was, um, uh, it had a one on the rating scale when it came on, which is not great. That doesn't sound very good. They give Unless it, you reverse, you know, like one's the top. You know, they only did 10 episodes, which what we remind Romano said was 10 episodes <laughs> turned into 11 months. 11 months. Well, you know, I thought it was interesting because one of the things Ray had mentioned about it was that he thought it was 20, he thought it was 24 7 with Everybody Loves Raymond. He said, but you're really making a 24 minute movie each week when they were doing, you know, the TV series. Yeah. Uh, I, I, it was 42 minutes, wasn't it? No, it's a 24. No, this is a this is this one. Oh, here. is it a one hour show? It's a one oh, hour show. Well, then maybe I inverted it. You know, maybe it's 42 it minutes. Okay. Yeah, she inverted it. No, but um, he he basically said he, he he hasn't worked so much, but it did make his wife happy because he's out of the house all the time. Well, you know, part of it she was used to him being out of the house for what 20 years, and all of a sudden he's yeah. around the house all the time. Well, he, like Romano, before he got a TV series, was like a 13 year overnight success. Mm -hmm. Then he had nine years of that, and then he had uh, three months he hated, as you always talked about. He hated entirely, and then he well, started... Well, you know, part of it is, is it was his life every day, and all of a sudden it stops. Yeah, they don't like that. I, mean, I, yeah. I, I know people that basically had... Um, um, I, I knew a man that was, his wife divorced him because his, t his series had been, you know, after like nine years on the air, his series was canceled. And he would spend all day long, you know, wait, you know, outside talking to people. And she divorced him because, you know, he, he just wasn't himself anymore. We didn't have anything to do. He had no follow-up for it. What do you do after you've had a series on for nine years? You can't. And Romano wanted to do something that wasn't what people <coughs> thought Romano was. Well, actually, that's kind of funny. I mean, when you, when you talk about it like that, it's like I always thought that, like, these Hollywood marriages, they got divorced because the money stopped coming in because the series stopped. But if you think about it, they totally changed because their whole schedule changed. Yeah, they're, and they're like kind of lost, going, okay, we got to get another one. Oh. Yeah, but they don't, you know, you're waiting, hanging by the telephone and call. I mean, um, I mean, I went to my father, my father knew a lot of people. I mean, he knew some very major actors that basically hung by the phone all day long, waiting for somebody to call. And then when somebody would call up that didn't have anything, you know, if it was the wrong number, they'd spend all that time talking because they had nothing to do. You get used to doing the, you know, you get used to getting up like at six o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and working until eight or nine at night. To and, get and all of a sudden they're going, oh, uh, what do I do? Mm -hmm. I have yeah. all this time. Well, that's so. what he did. So he created a show based upon, you know, men of a certain age. Yeah. Basically, like I said, a group of college buddies in the throes of middle age trying to keep their friendship going long after they graduate. Even down to the middle age, um, well actually, the, uh, what do you call it, mid-year, not mid-year, midlife mid crisis, crisis, sports yeah. car convertible. Mm -hmm. But the problem comes is... Horse it was yellow, not red. Yeah, and, but they cast the only guy in the three that no one would believe is going to have a midlife crisis with females. 
Certainly, you know, he's a typical guy. He's divorced from his wife. They've got a court order to keep him away from his own son. So, uh, and he, you know, he's going, he's dating somebody that's, uh, you know, you know, barely out of high school. Well, yeah, I saw that episode going, is that, I wasn't quite sure if they were dating, and then I thought they were dating, and well, yeah. They were, they were sort of really dating it. There's a yeah. show, we actually, I think it was the episode, Can't Let That Slide, was the episode, wasn't it? Uh, I don't know. So basically, yeah, uh, that would make sense. Yeah, you know, you know which was. They said it was their up episode. It was their up episode. That's what they said. Okay, uh, I'm gonna. Okay, when I started out working, they used to call these things melodramas. You know, you'd see a movie that had both comedy and drama in it. Right. It'd be a melodrama. Today in television, they call it serial drama. Oh. Well, it's just another word for comic and drama. But there's so god little comedy in it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is it, it's just like it's a it's a Jewish tragedy, you know. We, we, so yeah, but it's uh, it, it's just like I said. I, I know what he, I mean. They he, talking in there. He said, you know, that we all sat there and admired Maluka's abs. <laughs> you know, like the guy who's 57 years old, built like a rock, and he has a problem with girls. I, 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 folks, we got to let you know the secret. I'm you know I'm considerably older. And I discovered something very important, which a freshman asked me at the Academy Awards. He said, why is it all the young ladies are around you so much? I said, I think it's because I'm old. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to... I know, and I was surprised, too. Yeah. I'm talking to a guy at the screening thing about the young ladies, and he said, well, I think it's because you're old. <laughs> That's it. Maluka, okay, let's put it this way. I'm older than Maluka, and I don't look anything like Maluka. And I outweigh him by about 60 pounds. Oh, do you? Yeah, so he's much trimmer. He's taller than I am by a couple of inches, trimmer, and, and more athletic build than I am. So yeah, I was a wide receiver in college, a mm -hmm. wide out. And it was the day I'd be a tight end, there I was a wide, wide out. Mm -hmm. So because it was big. Or right out? You know, or, or left out. I said, what I was. They used to call you left out. That was my, that was really my position. I was called left out, and people would say, my relatives would say, oh, you poor young man. He said, you know, may, can we talk to the coach and get you to be included in the game and tell them, no, I'm left out. And they'd say, well, and we know you're left out, but, you know, and, you know, but. Maybe if you really work hard at it, you can play in the game. Like, no, that's the position. That's the position. And they said, well, then tell him to let you come into the game. <laughs> You'll stay in that position. So I tell people I, I was left, I played left out in college. So, but this, you know, that's, that's, that's fresh material, folks. Left out. Whereas, you know, I mean, I like, I mean, the, the guy, the, the two gentlemen, I think, um, Ray Romano and his co-writer, who co-created at Mike Royce, are a couple of nice guys. They sit there and really talk to people. Romano, basically. They were actually pretty funny. Yeah. And I was looking at some of the uh, footage that came out afterwards. Of course, the picture they show is Ray Romano with a bottle of Purell yeah. holding it, which goes back to, oh yeah, he was telling the story of... Oh, he had to do a sex scene, which is right here. It says, Romano hates sex scenes. Oh, it does? Yeah. Wish the other individual out there in the uh, other audience said, mm -hmm. "Yeah, remember he's the writer, folks. Uh -huh. If you're going to have a sex scene, you basically, and you don't like them, you don't write yourself into them." Uh huh. So, but the other one didn't. They just didn't buy that fact. But he's trying to explain the fact he's having a scene and he gets up and runs away, and he's with his pants down around his ankles, and he comes back out and. His pants are all damp. Uh huh. So of course it was the bottle of Purell that was in his pants pocket. And the other one, and the other person down there, she turns around the audience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. And he's going like this with this bottle. See, I carry a Purell around with me all the time. Yeah, like this. Yeah, like. And then you know, he said he really doesn't enjoy doing them. Well. Then don't write it in. Then don't write it in. Uh -huh. But. Um, but let's put it this way, according to the, uh, Bauer is the family man, Andrew Bauer from, what was it, Homicide? Uh, I don't know. No, he was on television. I recognize him, but I don't he know was what he was on TV, he was on, um, 
And here's the one neat thing about computers, which we can't do. These are the only times we actually do this stuff, but unfortunately, IMDB does not work well since Amazon took it over, as we keep talking about. I mean, the it's thing, working a lot slower. And now they changed the page. I mean, oh, I know. So, uh, you know, uh, at a certain age, he was, you know, he was on House, and he was, you know, see what was, I know, it was really slow, folks. You know, well, oh, he was in Fantastic Four and the Drama Strain. Yeah, you know, I know, Drama Strain, which was in, come on, Fantastic it's Four. All I know, trying to find out Hack, which like, nobody watched. Gideon's Crossing, which nobody watched. So basically, what happens is um, you you get stuck in a rut when you when you're a homicide. It was homicide life on the street mm -hmm. for six years, and then he quit to go be I a star. I didn't even know that show. Yeah, he quit to be a star and didn't work. So and then he's been Jackie Chan who had shows like that when he's but he's a he's a voiceover actor too. I mean, people recognize him as just 